Okay, nuclear note page 233, example one of solving half-life problems. So, in this example, the half-life of nitrogen 16 is 7.2 seconds. So, the 7.2 seconds is described as the half-life, and if you take a look above the page, that is sometimes represented by that capital T. Then if we keep reading, it says, how much of a 100 microgram sample of nitrogen 16 will remain after 28.8 seconds of decay? So here we're given a second value for time, and it, is, it represents that total time that has passed. So that would be represented by that lowercase t. And we notice that we are given a mass value. Now, there are different ways to solve half-life problems, but I'm going to stick to this chart because I think it's just the easiest way to map out your thoughts. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you is that in this chart and when you're figuring this out, the first line in the chart is always the, like the starting line. So if you think about like a, a track race, the starting line, and if everybody's lined up at the starting line, how much time, and this time represents the total, has passed. The race hasn't started, so zero time has passed. And if no time has passed, that means zero half-life cycles have occurred. So that means that the mass hasn't changed yet. So in, in this problem, it's given in micrograms, so that means that we still have 100 micrograms of the radioactive sample present. So now, if you think about it, at some point, um, the sample will go through its first half-life cycle. And at that first half-life cycle, okay, there's no longer 100 grams of the radioactive sample. It's been cut in half, so now it, there's only 50 micrograms of the radioactive sample. The question is, is to go from zero cycles to one cycles, that's where we use our value t. It took 7.2 seconds. So that means that now time has passed and 7.2 seconds of total time has passed from zero cycles to the first cycle. Now, our sample eventually will go through a second cycle and when it reaches finishing its second cycle there's no longer 50 grams of the sample remaining but now only 25 grams. The half-life to go from cycle 1 to cycle 2 it requires an additional 7.2 seconds to occur. So every cycle requires 7.2 seconds so now I have to add another 7.2 seconds to the total time for my new total time which is 14.4 seconds. Eventually our sample will go through a third cycle and at the end of the third cycle there's no longer 25 micrograms left. Now it's decayed down to 12.5 micrograms and for the sample to decay from 25 to 12.5 micrograms, it required another 7.2 cycles. So now the total time from zero all the way to three cycles is 21.6 seconds. Eventually, our sample will go through a fourth cycle, and at the end of the fourth cycle, the mass has cut in half from 12.5 down to 6.5 five micrograms. To go from the third cycle to the fourth, this requires another 7.2 cycles. And now our total time elapsed is 28.8 seconds. And that was, according to our problem, the final time. So now when we reach this final time, now we know the final mass of our sample remaining is that 6.25 grams. 
Sometimes in get, instead of providing an actual mass value, you might be asked for the fraction that's still that is still radioactive and present. So if z no time has passed, no half-life cycles, our original mass is still present, that would be represented by a fraction of 1 over 1, or as a percentage, 100%. When the first half-life cycle passes, we have half of the original mass that's present, so now we have a fraction of 1 half, 1 over 2, or a percent of 50%. At the end of cycle 2, okay, we now have only one-fourth of our original radioactive sample still present, which means we only have 25% remains re radioactive. At the third cycle, now we only have one-eighth of our original mass of the sample still radioactive and present, so that means that we are at 12.5%. And at the end of at the fourth half-life cycle, it's been cut in half again. So that means that we are now at a fraction of one sixteenth, which means we are at six point two five percent. What I want you to realize is that the site the half-life cycle number always will match up with the exact same fraction or percentage every single time, no matter the radioactive isotope or whatever the given starting mass value is.